We've got the truck. We're out on our first real drive, but uh, we've also got our first tunnel. What's up guys, welcome back, hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the channel, behind me is my heavily modified 2022 Jeep. And a lot of you guys have been asking me to do a full walk around of the truck, everything I've done to the truck, what we're, what we're using for gear. So it's time, let's do a full overview. I'm gonna start with all the exterior mods and the suspension, all that kind of stuff. Then we'll get into the camping gear and uh, what I've got inside the truck. All right guys, let's get right into it. We'll start with the biggest thing on the truck here that is quite obvious. That is the 40 inch Toyo Open Country Mud Terrain tires. These are a 13.5 wide tire on a 17 inch wheel and that's the KMC 234 beadlock wheel. These tires I've been running for about two or three years and they have been absolutely awesome. Pretty much anything I point them at, it just goes right through it. Snow, mud, whatever. Now in order to handle these 40 inch tires, we are running Dana 60 axles under here. The front axle is slightly modified by America's Most Wanted to have uh, Dana 80 brakes on it. So it has a little bit bigger brakes than most Dana 60s. And uh, in the back, we also have the Dana Ultimate 60 rear axle. We are running a Next Venture Motorsports aluminum front bumper. On that, we've got the Warren VR Evo 12,000 pound winch with a Freedom Recovery Gear synthetic winch line and a Factor 55 ultra hook. Now, if you're not too familiar with winch lines and that kind of stuff, uh, there's two different types of winch lines, steel and synthetic. We are running synthetic because it is safer, it is lighter and easier to manage. The ultra hook here just lets us clip onto any kind of shackles or anything real easy. And it keeps it nice and clean up front here, which I really like. I'm also running three amber lights here on the bumper from Heretic Studio. And those are just great for being nice down low in fog in, uh, in dark conditions. Now we've also done custom fenders here up front. These are from Metal Cloak. These are the aluminum overland tube fenders and we have the matching ones on the rear as well and one of the other upgrades that we did when adding the axles and the 40 inch tires was we added a psc hydro assist steering system and that basically gives you uh more power when you're steering makes it feel kind of like you can't even feel any resistance at all because it's just applying extra pressure to turn those big tires when you're air down and on the rocks it makes it a lot easier even on the highway it feels a lot better it's a little bit different and you have to get used to it when you first start driving but uh, I really like it. We've also got a tack suspension because we're running these big tires. Obviously the truck is lifted. We're running a four and a half inch TerraFlex suspension with their Alpine IR arms and the Falcon 3.3 adjustable shocks. And those allow you to kind of choose three different settings from firm to hard for uh, kind of how you want your suspension stiffness to feel, which is great. And one of the main reasons that we chose the TerraFlex suspension over other options is that the type of uh, bushings and joints they use and the coatings they use all stand up really well to the salt and wet weather that we have here uh, up in Canada. A lot of suspension systems are made with drier climates in mind and they just get rusty really fast and end up looking terrible and being hard to deal with on the truck afterwards. So for the rear bumper, we're also running again a Next Venture Motorsports aluminum rear bumper. It also has box sliders that come around the side here which i really appreciate and kind of finally on the outside here a very cosmetic upgrade we've uh put in these oracle flush mount tail lights now the quality on these has been iffy i've um, been having some issues with them and i know other people have been having some issues with them too so i'm not gonna go ahead and recommend them at this time i'm hoping that uh oracle fixes that and gets them sorted out but uh the look is quite nice uh hopefully we can get them working right for rock sliders here, we're running the Evo Rocker Bombers. 
They're just uh, one of the nicest sliders that you can get. They're really beefy, work really well. I like those. Now the biggest modification that we've made to the truck is under the hood because we've just put in a 426 Hemi, 606 horsepower, 575 pound, pound feet of torque. So this crazy motor is gonna give us the power to push the big 40 inch tires effortlessly, as well as get us over anything we pointed at, pretty much. All right, let's move on to uh, camping equipment that we've got on the truck here. This is the iCamper ExoShell 270 awning, and it's another recent addition to the truck. But what's really cool about it is not only is it really quick to set up, about one or two minutes, it can be freestanding as it wraps all the way around the truck, or if it starts raining and you need a little bit more support or some wind, it's got optional legs that just fold down really quick, and you just get that little bit of extra support. I kind of like it with the legs up, it makes it a little sturdier. It also has some ropes and stakes that you really need to tie down for wind. and. The amount of coverage you get here is really huge. This is a perfect amount of space. And I like that it wraps all the way around to the back of the truck so you can get in and out here without much trouble. So now let's take a look at the GFC camper. All right guys, so this is the inside of the GoFast camper. I chose this camper for my truck because it's pretty lightweight. The whole thing is made of aluminum and weighs about just over 300 pounds, including the, the tent on the top as well. The coolest thing about it is that you can go into it from inside the camper. So you can pop out, there's two small panels here you can pop out and a larger one you can pop out in the back. And uh, then you can stand up inside the bed of the truck. Let me show you. All right, so here we are inside the camper. See, I've got the two panels here that I popped out. I'm just standing up, which is nice. I can put a chair down, I can take this cushion off and use this as a table or a desk, which is super nice for when I'm on the road and editing and stuff like that. Also nice about this tent, it's got windows here, 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 here. Every single wall can open up and you can get a panoramic view all around you, which is great on a nice day. Now I'm sure you're wondering, how do you keep warm in your tent camping in sub-zero temperatures? Let me show you. All right, so what we have right here is a planar diesel heater. We've made a custom aluminum box to mount this uh, to the GFC. The exhaust runs out the bottom and comes out underneath the truck down here. Right here we have a modified Rotopax. So this is to store diesel fuel and then I have an extra pack of diesel here. The coolest part about what we've done here, and this is all custom work done by my friend Ryan at Modular Racks and his team, is we've run this hose from the heater directly up into the floor of the tent. Now let me show you inside. So right here is where it comes to the tent. So we've modified this cushion, cut out a square and re-sewn 
the cover and then we have this nice little vent where the heat comes out of and that's how you keep the tent nice and toasty warm up here there's also a little thermostat for the heater so you can have that up here and set the temperature and they'll turn on and off and kind of maintain the temperature you want so that's new pretty excited about that all right now let's talk about power i've got multiple cameras i'm running a refrigerator starlink internet whatever else i might need my heater uses electricity it's all sorts of reasons that i need electricity when i'm out on my trips so recently i'm running this guy this is the anchor 757 powerhouse this is a 1228 watt hour power station it is an absolute beast it's got six ac outlets it's got this fancy little light big display that shows you how much power you got left estimated time remaining for the battery depending on what you're currently running it has a dc socket and a whole bunch of usb ports which is great for charging gopros and uh, phones and all that kind of stuff so i usually just charge this up at home and then uh, i'm also charging it from solar anchor does make their own solar panels that you can use with this to charge it that you can buy separately uh, i have those but what i'm using mostly is on the roof of the gfc we've got two 120 watt sun flare solar panels so when i'm driving or parked this this is usually in the back of the truck somewhere we've got wire running down from the roof that we just plug into the back to charge that from solar which gives me plenty of juice for everything i need i've tested a whole bunch of power stations as you guys know if you've been watching the channel for a while and this one has been the best i've used so far so link in the description as well if you want to pick up one of these guys All right, guys, let's talk about inside the truck, the place where I spend a lot of time when I'm driving. So I've got this kind of set up in a way that works for me. Starting right here on the dash, I have the 67 Designs mounting system, which has all sorts of arms and stuff. So these are my action camera mounts, cell phone. This is on a magnet. We got the tablet mount here. This just clamps onto this tablet. I've got a seven inch tablet I'm using for mapping. This is just pretty much exclusively for running Onyx off-road. Moving down here communications we've got this Kenwood portable radio it's on a charging station I've just got a little hand receiver for it I have a vehicle mounted radio that we're gonna put in here at some point I just haven't gotten around to wiring it that'll probably get mounted up here in this overhead molly panel so up here I've mounted my Starlink router and then I have the wires just kind of wrapped around the seat so I can easily just pull it out wire it up to the dish and put that wherever I need it to go I also have here right above me my uh, aux beam switch panel which I use for controlling my lights. Over here on the seat I have this kind of uh, gear bag that wraps around the seat so it kind of just keeps this secure. This is all my camera stuff in here. I just keep this handy so that I can easily access it when I need to jump out and get shots. In the back you can see here we got the Dometic CFX3 55 liter fridge. This fridge is pretty cool because it has a ice maker in it. So in the summer, you can turn on the ice maker. You have to put basically ice cube trays in it in this little compartment and it freezes them. You can have ice cubes for in your drinks. It's pretty cool. All right, so there you have it. That's pretty much everything on the Trail Destroyer. So I hope to see you guys out on the trail. Do me a favor, if you're not already subscribed, we're trying to get up to 200,000 subscribers. Would really appreciate it if you help me out. More than 60% of the people who watch the channel are not subscribed according to the statistics that YouTube tells me. So help me out a bit. Hit the subscribe button. See you next week. Thanks.